So what's going on guys, I'm Blackhawks Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where today what I wanted to do is go through the cutscene for Modern Warfare 2 Zombies and talk about how we got to this point in the story and what we see in there regarding our Requiem team, Dead, Weaver, Strauss, Carver, Grey, the Ethereum Vials, where is Richtofen, Samantha? There were so many questions that we were left with after seeing Modern Warfare 3 Zombies cutscene that I want to ask and take a deeper look at in this video because it's extremely interesting. Now, I've already done a full breakdown of it explaining what we see, but just giving you a quick overview before we get into the nitty gritty stuff. The cutscene starts off where we see some military soldiers about to conduct a raid. We know this military is called Terminus Outcomes. It is a PMC hired by Zakiv. He is one of the people or soldiers conducting this raid. And essentially what they're here for is to collect what they would call weapons. So we see as they're fighting off against the local police, they make their way to a hotel, blow the door down, and as they make their way underground in this building, they see in front of them four people dead around a table. And in the middle of this table is what they came for. There is a device which they activate and it opens, and upon doing so, reveals two vials. We know these vials are Ethereum, so Zakaev and the rest of Terminus Outcomes take these two vials, place them in a box, and leave. But just as they're escaping the location, still fighting off against the police, one of the soldiers under fire and in desperate straits ends up throwing one of the vials at his attackers, which shatters on the ground and a clean purple fog begins to spread. And then all of a sudden, everybody begins transforming into zombies, which is when everything starts to become overrun. But luckily for Sakave, he's secured himself inside an armored vehicle with other members of Terminus Outcomes and they drive away. So that's the end of that cutscene, and then we go to a new one, which takes place a couple of weeks later, where we see Kate Laswell, Soap, Ravanov, and another character that we don't see but we can hear, SSO Green, where they're flying to the site of the outbreak, and their mission here is to discover exactly what's gone on, and that's where it ends. So we can assume in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, when we finally get to play it, that's where we're going to start off playing as an operator, leaving this helicopter to find out what Zakiev and the rest of Terminus Outcomes were doing here just a few weeks prior. So that's the story that we saw in the cutscene, but it's so much deeper than that. The main plot twist being what we saw underground in the hotel. As Sakaya blows up the door to the hotel and travels underground, when he sees lying in front of him four dead characters around the table and in the middle of it, a device containing two Ethereum vials. Well, what exactly has gone on here? Because Modern Warfare 3 Zombies takes place weirdly between Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2, so between the year 2019 and the year 2022. These four people that we see lying dead around the table are Weaver, Grey, Strauss and Carver. Weaver is very noticeable, you can see his eye patch, his hair, his beard, everything matches up. The other three characters aren't as clear, but if you take a closer look at them, this person on the left with their head on the table is Dr. Strauss, you can just tell by his hair. The one in the background with the long hair is Dr. Grey, and the one closest to us with the hat, although initially if you checked out my other video, I said this reminds me of Samantha because of the hat we saw her wearing in Firebase C being very similar. However, this isn't her, it's Carver. So we have all four members, Weaver, Grey, Strauss and Carver, lying dead, around this table underneath this hotel. Like I said, in the middle of this table is this device containing Ethereum vials, but you will also notice that it is wired up to our dead characters. There are cables going from this device to each one of Strauss, Grey, Carver and Weaver's hands. And this leaves us with so many questions. Firstly, the last time we saw these characters alive was the Forsaken ending cutscene, which took place in the year 1985. If MW3 Zombies takes place between 2019 and 2022. That means this is about 36 or 37 years after the last time we saw them alive. So there's a big time gap there and when we do get Trout's next game next year in 2024, from everything that we know about it due to leaks it's going to be taking place during the Gulf War which is the 90s so the zombie story that we are getting told next year should be a prequel to this which I'm guessing will confirm exactly how these characters got in this situation in the first place. So right now what we are seeing is a sequel to what we're going to be told next year, but still there is a 36 or 37 year gap between the last time we saw these characters, so so much I'm assuming would have happened, we don't know how they got themselves in this situation, but we can speculate. In Forsaken's ending cutscene, we were told by the Forsaken that these exact characters, Weaver, Grey, Strauss and Carver, would die. 
if we defeated him, which we did, he showed us a premonition of what our fates would be. Throwing Molotov. You are so eager to stop me. Would you like to see how that story ends? Gaze upon the future that awaits you, should you defeat me. Leave! Sam! Hello! Now, as you've just seen, the Forsaken shows us if we defeat him, which we did, our characters would be dead in cells. But in this cutscene, yes, our characters are dead, but it's not in that location. So, either because we defeated the Forsaken, what he told us turned out to be true, our characters did end up dying, just not in the exact same way that he showed us, but still their deaths came, or that premonition never happened, and their deaths has nothing to do with that, and they've died in a different way. We don't know. I'm assuming it's the second one, because if you take a look at the way they've died, it looks very suspicious, whereas what we were shown by the Forsaken seems to be the result of someone else killing them. Them sitting around this table, holding hands, connected to this machine, almost reminds me of a sacrifice. Them killing themselves. And for some reason, one of the first things I thought when I saw this was it reminded me so much of the Revelations ending. I mean, Assassin's Creed, not COD Zombies Revelations, where Altair, wanting to protect the Apple of Eden, locks himself inside of his library and dies of old age. Years later he is discovered by Ezio, but the whole point of Altair doing what he did, sacrificing himself in a way, locking himself inside of this room, was to protect the apple. That might be a bit random, I don't know why this scenario reminded me of that, but it kind of did. We don't know how these characters died exactly. Like Altair, it could have been of old age. Remember, this is almost 40 years after we last saw them, and the characters back in Cold War were middle-aged anyway, so without working ages out, they'd be about 80 years old now, perhaps, give or take. So there's a chance they could have died of old age, although I'm suspecting that might not be the case. But when we see them connected to this machine, all four of them sitting together, kind of like a ritual with the Ethereum vials in the middle, it does almost look like they've sacrificed their selves for a reason that we don't know. Which brings up so many other questions. One, how do they even have these Ethereum vials in the first place. At the end of Cold War Zombies, all of the outbreak zones were closed off, so everything linked to the zombie outbreaks became trapped once again within the Dark Ether. But we see here in MW3 Zombies, Ethereum vials. Where did these come from? How do our characters have them? One theory I have seen, if our characters didn't die around this table of old age, well, the way we see them connected to this machine, could that relate to their death? We've seen plenty of versions of soul boxes in our zombies games. Could this machine be sort of a soul box did these characters weaver gray strauss and carver sacrifice themselves via having their souls sucked out of them into this machine to perhaps create these ethereum vials just like in our old zombie story how ultimus and premise were connected to the ether how they were interwoven into its fabrics how they had ether in their blood did strauss carver gray and weaver have the same thing through their sacrifice did they somehow create these ethereum vials during ether from their blood to make these vials and you will also notice that only two vials release from the machine yet it looks like there's four places four characters there should be four vials here but there's only two meaning there's two missing if that's true who took the other two vials 
there is a character in our zombie storyline that we haven't seen in this cutscene being Eddie. Where is Richtof and that's if he's even still alive at this point? How old would he be? I think about 70, late 60s. So there's a chance Richtofen could still be alive. Did he take two of the vials? The other character, of course, we didn't see here being Samantha. The last time we saw her in Cold War Zombies, she was trapped within the Dark Ether. She plunged herself into the Forsaken to close all of the Outbreak Zones, and upon doing that, she became trapped there. I'm assuming because she's such a big, important character, Troyok wouldn't have killed her off. So either she ended up escaping the Dark Ether between 1985 and the year 2021, 2022, right now, or she's still trapped in the Dark Ether. What if the reason Weaver, Grey, Strauss and Carver are connected to this machine was to somehow try and save Samantha from the Dark Ether? There has to be a reason why they're here if they're not here to protect these vials, which it doesn't look like that's the case. It looks more like a ritual that they're doing. Then what would they be doing it for? Was it an attempt for them to save Samantha from the Dark Ether? Maybe something else? There are so many questions. And just going back to what I said about Assassin's Creed, the ending, where we saw Altair lock himself inside of the room and just sat down on that chair and died of old age whilst protecting the apple and the key. Well, after that, Ezio ended up discovering him and the apple. What if, just like Altair waited for Ezio hundreds of years later after his death, well, if you follow that story, he didn't know he was waiting for him specifically, but he knew someone would come along, he just didn't know who. What if Weaver, Strauss, Grey and Carver knew eventually someone would discover them? Perhaps they just didn't think it would be Zakaev, maybe someone else they thought would discover these Ethereum vials and use them for good, whereas obviously Zakaev's going to use them for bad as a weapon. And I suppose the final thing I would ask, just going back to their deaths, is well, when did they die? It doesn't look recent, it looks like their bodies have been decaying for quite a while. I don't know how long it takes to get to this state, a couple of years. But if there's almost a 40 year gap between Cold War Zombies and Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, well, it really could have been anywhere between those 40 years besides on the last year I would say, that the Requiem team died here. They could have been lying in this position dead for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Was it more recent? We don't know. And if you look in this room, it isn't only them and the Ethereum. In the background on shelves, you will notice the Severus Wonder Weapon from Mao the Toten, the Perk Cans, the Monkey Bomb. There are relics here from our zombie story. Why would the Requiem team place these items in this room with them? Again, this reminds me so much of a ritual or sacrifice. You see it so many times in movies where you need items to complete these rituals, to connect to the dead almost. It just seems really strange. And the final thing I want to say is I don't want to give any spoilers here. This isn't one, it's just a prediction, but we've seen, as with Sakaev, a lot of the times in Call of Duty, a dead character doesn't actually mean they are dead. One of the Ethereum vials gets thrown in this cutscene, gas spreads and turns everyone into zombies. Well, is there a chance that gas spreads down to the basement of this hotel and resurrects Weaver Grey, Strauss and Carver as well. I think there's a chance. But yeah, so many questions that as of right now, we just don't know, partly because we haven't played the game and also because this is a sequel to Troyok's next one, meaning there is such a big gap, almost 40 years, where so much clearly has happened that we can't even begin to predict. We can kind of speculate a little bit. We saw so many things at the end of Cold War Zombies like Project Janus, which was Richtofen's secret project. What was all that about? I'm guessing that's going to be a part of next year's story. Where even is Richtofen? What is he up to? Is he still alive? Is he dead at this point? The same question with Samantha. We'll have to wait and see, so there we go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you until the next one. No, see you in the next one. I, I, okay, goodbye.